What's going on, folks? Painless? Uh, <laughs> yeah, getting another one. I got my coffee going. It's raining out over this part of the this part of the country. Uh, off today. Uh, gonna chill and and kick it all day. Movies all day. To be all day. <laughs> nah, it's not. But uh, you know, I uh, you all see the thumbnail. Um, I remember, you, and this, let me tell you something. Well, you, you know before I know, because you see the minutes. I don't know how long I'm going to go on this video, but I plan to go, uh, this going to be, I, I suspect, a, a lengthy video. Uh, but anyway, I, I was reluctant to use this thumbnail just because of the, that word thought. A thought to me, and, you know, we know what it stands for, that hoe over there, you know, to that, that whatever. I, uh, that word is becoming like, remember high hater? <laughs> you a hater. You know what I'm saying? You a, you a hater. And you know what I know when words... <laughs> I'm just I'm laughing because I'm thinking what I'm about to say. I know what I'm about to say, but when it popped in my head, it made me laugh. Well, you know when other people start using words, like I I I really believe that. Like you see this a lot with Hispanics, especially Mexicans that live around Black folks. They always. <laughs> They are always like 10 to 15 years late on shit. When you hear these, when you hear these other groups like Mexicans or white folks start using words like, you're a hater. We been start as as in the so-called black community. We we don't really use that no more. It's done. So that's kind of how I look at thought. I remember somebody broke down, maybe this was like 2011. They broke down, they really went in on the back, like, kind of like the, uh, kind of like the, the intricacies of that word hater when someone uses it. And they broke it down pretty good. I forget who that was, but it was interesting. Even now, I would find usage if I ran into that to that video again, but it's probably gone because, I mean, this is like, what, 12, 13 years ago? YouTube has transitioned so much to people that just fell off or whatever. I mean, there's lots of stuff I can't find. But what I was, laugh what I was laughing about, <laughs> I even see now, when I go to, like, the Mexican part of town or the, the Hispanic, because you got Hondurans, Guatemalans over there, El Salvadorians over there, and they are all different. You know, I, I'm seeing, now y'all <laughs> y'all probably just seen this or y'all going to pay attention now. I, you know, when I see the, when I see a little Mexican guy in the 2002 GMC, with chrome eight <laughs> with chrome eighteen inch rims. Like it's two thousand one. Remember two thousand one, the navigators, the, especially the expeditions, you know, cats had twenty twenty cats had twenty two, twenty four inch, twenty six inch rims. You may looked up and found a dude dude maybe had a one of them tanks, one of them big ass, ex remember them big ass excursions? <laughs> you can, a big ass excursion, man, you can feel like, <laughs> you can feel like 15 dudes up in that mud. You know? So I see Hispanic, I, I see a lot of Hispanics doing that now. Like, y'all, Y'all are like 20 years behind. 
Nobody's rolling in Ford Expeditions like that. <laughs> you know? But, uh, yeah, so I, uh, like I said, I was reluctant to use this thumbnail. But anyway, let me get into this video. <laughs> and I, I want to thank the new subscribers. There's some people... Uh, in my last video that said they were new subs and I appreciate that. Uh, it doesn't go unnoticed. I see the comments and stuff like that. Uh, thank you. That's all I can say. Thank you and I appreciate it. Cause I'm not, it's rare. I don't really give a shout out to people that watch my content, but I got damn it. Shout out to y'all that's been down. Uh, I think I saw somebody said they've been rocking with me since 2011. And I appreciate that. And, and you know, and I guess, look, and th this is perfect because it's going to segue into what I'm about me, a little bit about me and perceptions of me, uh, e even now and before in the past. I guess because I don't do this for money. You know, it's not a fake Thank you. I appreciate it. Hit. The, I don't say hit the like. I don't say super. I don't use because I, I don't have any monetary investment in this. But no, I appreciate my subs though. That listen. That take their time to listen to my ass run my damn mouth. Because I know, I understand it. You know there's there's. YouTube content creators that I watch and because they actually have something to say. But look, let me get into this. But again, in, in closing, thank you. Uh, people thinking, look, let me tell you something. Let me tell you what I am not. <laughs> uh, people suspect that uh, I'm this Ben Carson <laughs> Larry Elder uh, type brother, black man. And I am far from that. Now, I I have nothing against that. I do listen to Larry Elder. Uh, I, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a fan. I'm indifferent. Like he has some things to say that I agree with and he has some things to say that I don't agree, that I don't agree with, you know. Um, but people put me in that bucket. You know, there's some guys that I do listen to. Uh, see, I think, uh, like Officer Tatum. See, when you start getting into that realm, it's easy, it's easy to be like, okay, this guy obviously <laughs> is obviously saying this for some clout and clicks. Because you can't, see, I... People would probably call me the original Tom on YouTube in the so-called black sector. I'm written, yes, yes. But I was saying it because I, I meant what I said. And, and I still mean what I say. See, I believe if you're a real man, if you're a man that, see, I've been raised around nothing but God. Look, I had a balance family structure. I had a mama in the home. I had a daddy in the home. My mama side is big. My daddy's side is big. So I've had uncles. I've always had men checking me for, for um, <laughs> behavior unbecoming. <laughs> I've always had that. I've had my ass toe up along my youth. Sometimes it was explained why, a lot of times it wasn't. So when you have that background, see, men, to me, are naturally conservative. You should be naturally conservative. When I see a guy, when I hear a guy that is always spending money and shit, you know, like this, tr oh, Oh, I'm bored. I'll, let me just go walk in the mall and spend some money that, that I, you know, I'm bored. That, to me, that shit, to me, is very feminine, woman-like. I expect that from women. 
And any woman that listen to me, oh my gosh, here he goes. He's sexist. He's a he he he's a damn brute. No, let me tell you something. Any woman knows that that's the truth. You hear it all the time. Oh, I'm just gonna go window shop. You know. And they always. I've even heard this in 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 food marketing. You know. Um, you know, in the food industry, stay outside the perimeter of, don't go in them aisles, stay at, stay in the perimeter of, of the damn, um, of the damn um, grocery store. What's on the perimeter? You got your meat, you got your cheese, your dairy, essentials. What's in them aisles? Hot pockets. Ramen noodles, <laughs> shit like that, you know? Ding dongs, oatmeal pies, nutty butter bars and shit like, shit you don't need. The perimeter is, is essential for what you need. Meat, dairy, water, shit like that. So this is something that I made up. It's the truth. You know, so when a guy does that, when a guy, when I hear a guy saying, oh, we should defund the police, what the fuck is you talking about? And, and some of my street guys that may listen to me or, or very more or, or more familiar in the street. Look, I know my background from my family that has, you know, that has, uh, that I know of. Because my roots, my roots are West Coast and down South. Those are my roots. You know, Los Angeles, all the way up to Oakland, Richmond, back down to Alabama, the Gump, Ham, all that. One thing I've seen, it's not to be, that, that's why I said the stuff that I said, to be, when you get pinched, Meaning when you get caught or, or, or get, you know, yeah, when you get arrested, pent, whatever. One thing I've, I've seen to make a big scene and a fuss and kicking and screaming and all that bullshit. I mean, you may say, hey, man, blase, blase, blase. But to be dropping on the floor like a three, like a three year old child does, you know, because when, you know, you know how a little, little child try to, pull themselves to the ground so they can't get picked up and then they kicking and screaming. That shit is not a good look in, if you in that life. Take your pinch, go sit down for a little bit, and then do what you need to do. But all that carrying on, I can't breathe, all that shit, and I said it, I said it, and I mean it. That shit is not a good look. And most old school G's and guys in that life, girls, women in that life, women, because you got women in that life too, they know the objective is for the police to catch me and for me to get away. You got, we both got jobs to do. Your job is to catch me and my job is not to get caught. And all this dumb shit about no police, look, people got to twit. This like Telling, snitching. I, I broke that down way back in the day. I said, if I'm a if I'm a construction guy and I leave my truck overnight in my driveway, and I come out and half my damn tools are gone, and I call the police, that's not telling. That's not telling. That's not quote unquote snitching. Now, if I'm in that life and I swore old to, you know, I, I'm with a group of guys and we all getting it how we live illegally and I get put in a twist or I get caught up and pinched, what, why would I, first off, you need to be thinking, this is why nobody likes a snitch. Even police, they don't like snitches because 
it, 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 telling on someone is like a bot. Telling on someone is so, it's such a violation. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it, it, I can get into the intricacies of it. But if you in that life, who am I to jeopardize because I got caught? Why am I messing up for all the other guys that are relying on that, it, it, even though it's illegal, illegal monies and shit like that? Who am I? I swore, and, and that's why I said a lot of people play in the streets. You can't play. You can't be half, one, one foot in, one foot out. And in our community, in the so-called black community, there's this obsession with glorifying the streets where you got guys playing in the streets but really not about that life. It's only a select few. It's just like a hood or a gang. You can have like 150 dudes from one set, one gang, clique, whatever, Seven of them are real hitters. Real, they are, they're, they're the ones putting people on T-shirts every weekend. The rest of the hundred and something, they just, you know, hanging around, coming around, da, 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 da. But, you know, I don't want to make it about that. But, see, I'm saying this because real men, we want, we want law enforcement. There's a need for it. This balance, you know, there's balance in it, and it's a necessity. If somebody knock your grandmama over the head, I mean, yeah, you could take some street justice, but you know, they're, 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 look, look, it's just a necessity. And like, it, like the saving of money, the conservative, you know, the conservation of monies. That's men. I, look, women are very loose with money. Women are very loose with money. And I've talked about this. And I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about this later on in this video. Because I'm already 17 minutes in and I got a whole lot of other shit to say. But yeah, to be, if you're a guy, if you're a straight guy, you, you are nationally conservative. You're not quick to go to war. I've always said guys that are quick to go to war, quick to kill, that's a feminine act. You kill for a reason. And there's a difference between murder and killing and all that stuff. That's another video. I could talk about snitching in a whole video. I could talk about between murder and killing in a video. But I'm just laying out some basic, I'm, I'm briefly touching, touching on points to illustrate the overall picture. If you're a real guy, if you're, if you're a guy, regular guy, you don't believe in this giving free shit away. You don't believe if you're, if you're a guy, if you're a staunch down, 10 toes down guy, you don't support the idea that a woman can just go and open up her legs, keep having a gang of damn kids, and getting rewarded with it by state and federal assistance. You're not, but, but you'd be surprised in the so-called black community how many, especially church niggas, Subscribe to this, and they don't even think about what I'm saying. It, a lot of times, it be their own goddamn daughters and granddaughters and nieces, and to go against that would be would go, means going against the family. But shit, some gotta change if you want it. So yeah, you if you're a real man, you don't you don't believe in that assistance. You got, you got four generations of motherfuckers living off assistance. Can you believe that shit? If you're a real man, you like order. Another, another point. You like order. There needs to be order and shit. Not just running around reckless. You need order. You need structure. That's what a real man wants, structure, order, not chaos.
you know? So, you know, if that makes me a time and that, ha you know, since I saw, and I, you know, look, let me tell you something. Trump, it's Trump, hashtag Trump 2024 for me. I'm going to just say that. Me knowing, and you seen this shit in Chicago. And how many times people, like I told you, the guy or, or guy or the woman that said they've been rocking with me since 2011. How many times, how many goddamn times have I said that this immigration situation is, the people that is going to feel it the most is black folks. I've been saying that. And how many times have I said that you think somebody like me, Painless, is worried about um, Jose coming across the border and taking my job? You think I'm going to compete with they asses? But me, knowing me, seeing the forest before the trees, I, I know that there are a lot of black folks that are going to lose that race to Maria and Jose. You know why? Because they've been sitting on their goddamn ass doing the very and supporting the very shit that I just said. Handouts. Oh, I'm just going to get it from Uncle Sam. Oh, you're paying 200, you're paying $2,000 a month uh, for this house? <laughs> what a sucker. I'm only paying $86 and the government is footing the rest. That's what niggas has been doing. Getting shit for free. And I said this, only in America can, and I, I made this illustration. I said only in America can a guy, can a fan, Jimmy been working down at the plant for 12 years, busting his ass, saving money to buy a hundred and $156,000 house. He gets the house. He's put 10, 15 down on the home in a decent neighborhood only to have a fucking U-Haul. <laughs> when you see them damn U-Hauls coming in, you know what time it is. You got this U-Haul come in, and you got a bunch of crumb snatchers jumping out, you know, moving in in all times of the night, moving in in the middle, no courtesy. Oh, it's, it's one in the morning. I'm going to move in. Yeah, you can, but there's courtesy. Just because you can do some shit, that don't mean you should do that shit. People need to understand that. And here she's moved in with all her damn kids. Jimmy, his mortgage now was what? Let's say nine, eighteen a month. Only to have this woman who ain't did shit but fill out some forms. Well, she did a lot. She opened her legs a lot of times and had some Ill illegitimate children and ran down and filled out some paperwork and gave a woe is me story. Only have her pay $56 a month the government put the rest. Now, his kids got to go with her kids to, to the same school. What the fuck is the fairness in that? And that, you know, I mean, what's up with that? That's some bullshit. But it happens every day. And if you're a real man, you don't support, you shouldn't be so, you shouldn't be supporting no goddamn shit like that. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, so the people who do that, now you got Jose and Maria coming over here. And you see, they propping them up. They ain't even hiding this shit no more. Here, here's three hundred dollars. Here's three hundred dollars a month or a week. And I said, Hispanics are taking over, and I don't mind really, because I wasn't picking my ass. You know, 
I wasn't picking my ass, doing, you know, spending frivolously, frivolously and all that shit. I was preparing. But a lot of you black folks that you, this you you get what you you get what you vote for. That's what it is. You wanted it, you got it. That's why all them people in Chicago. Y'all should have saw that shit. But all this black and brown shit. Look, I ain't got nothing against Hispanics. Got them in, you know, I look, people know me, but I'm just saying for I'm just saying shit for what it is. You got all them damn people, you know. All those Hispanics coming and got that black and brown shit, which is a farce. You know what I'm saying? You think they be talking that black and brown shit at La Rosa meetings? Nope. I never heard a Hispanic running for office, running for some type of committee that has made the national news talk that black and brown shit. It's always, always these Negroes talking that black and brown shit. You need to jake that shit out your damn head. <laughs> shit. You need to get that up out your head. They know that. They know. And it's funny, you know, I brought up the story about at least where I live, these Hispanic, you know, back in the day, you gotta go you gotta go to that part of town to see that shit about the <laughs> Hector driving the two thousand three GMC, whatever, the GMC truck, and it's 2023 with the shiny rims, hubcaps. But see, where I live at, these Hispanic, they're driving BMWs now. They got these Mexican restaurants. They going to schools. They doing the stuff. They doing the stuff. They 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 are doing the stuff. Now black folks are doing shit too. Don't get me wrong, but I'm talking about there's a lot of dust in the so-called black community that shouldn't be. But when you're just picking your ass and shuffling and marching and worried about the wrong shit, you know, you worried about trying to get. More assistance. You worried about fucking police reform. For what? Why are you... <laughs> you up here lobbying. You up here doing bullshit. You know how many times I see, I see brothers just shuffling and I'm like, you just look so suspicious. And, you know, look, let me tell you something. White folks, they don't... See, this is where you start acting like a child, and a lot of black folks act like children. They need that attention. They need that attention. So they just start doing stupid, irrational shit. This shit that... Remember I've said that, you know, you get the brother that get on the bus and start rapping real loud with the headphone... Like, for what? Why are you doing it? He needs attention. Or the sister back there, you know, the stud back there on the bus, on the phone, everybody can hear her fucking conversation, and she doesn't give a shit, and she's looking around to see if anybody notices her. Of course we notice you. We can hear your whole goddamn conversation. She needs attention, like a child. So I've learned to kind of just recognize that and ignore. And I think a lot of people, especially, I think a lot of white people know, like, oh, just don't, just don't, don't give them eye contact. Just keep going. Just keep moving. Straight up. But yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's me. 
I, you know, I'm not like, I, I'm just, I'm just me. And I think most men that have been raised decently, that should be your natural inclination is all that shit I've said in the last 30 minutes, 25 minutes, 25, 30 minutes. Don't make you a Tom or anything. You know, that's like all this dating, you know. I looked at Jeezy, he talking to, <laughs> you know, I try to stay out of topics like this. But see, it doesn't surprise me from, from Jeezy. Jeezy is, see, let me tell you something. Don't be lured and fascinated and 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 enamored with all the glitz and glimmers and the money and the and the IG posts and the trips and all this stuff. These got Jeezy's just a, he's just a, a typical brother with a with some paper. For the life of me, I don't understand. See, he married this girl, got her pregnant, and now he's divorced her. Now, this is a woman. This is a non-black woman. This is a non-black woman. Asian woman, Vietnamese woman. That has gone on record. That has gone on. I've seen it and heard it with my own eyes. That, yeah, I like black men, but they're more like a side piece. Basically, there's something I can just roll in bed with at night under the cover and guise of darkness. But that white guy, that's the one. And I've said this before. This is common. I've even said, I've even experienced it. Do you know, especially, no, this was before I was even married. But mostly after I got married. Do you know how many women I've been with like, especially Hispanic women. I know good goddamn it well I wouldn't be invited to the quinceanera. <laughs> I know. I know. I know I couldn't go around our family. But you know what I did? I did what I did and I kept it moving. Cause she get I'm I'm getting something. But I'm not marrying this chick. I'm not campaigning for this woman. I'm not, try, I'm not trying to marry you. You know? I was just trying to do push-ups on your back and on your stomach. That's it. That's all. That's it. And Jeezy, Mr. Dope Man, Mr. Trapper die. He couldn't see this shit. You know why? Because he's of that same dust ilk. He got infatuated. And see, this Jenny Ma, she, let me tell you something. She is no different than what we perceive these sisters to be out here. A lot of this thought stuff. She, don't, look. Especially these Vietnamese. See, I, I, me living in Hawaii all them years, I've had the uh, ability to break down different Asian groups. See, Japanese, which are which, I, which I would say the biggest Asian ethnic group over in Hawaii, they don't play that shit. The eight, the Japanese women do not get down like that. Uh, just like they just don't. They don't get down like that. And I think there's a correlation. I'm going to tell you why. Japanese are, very, are some of the most nationalistic people on the planet. And they pretty much stick with their own. You know, very homogenous, you know, in their ways. Like, you ain't going <laughs> to... You ain't going to see... No, I've never seen a Japanese liquor store owner you know like when you go like when you go to like LA Oakland and stuff like that it's a gang I know I know back in the 90s 
It was Koreans, 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 Koreans. They got all the fake chronic hats. You go in there and get you a Watts hat, Inglewood hat, Long Beach, Compton hat, East Side, West Side, Gangster, Hoover, whatever. You get all them fake ass hats in the back. You get you an eight ball, some chili cheese, whatever. You ain't gonna see no Japanese like that because they don't get down like that. Vietnamese get down like that. You go in there and get you a bowl of pho. You know, they selling fake jewelry and shit. They got they, you know, they do that. And it's no coincidence that Asian, like that Vietnamese, Filipinos, which can be considered the NIWGAs of the Asian overall, and Vietnamese and Korean, they like you. You'll be more likely to see them mess with brothers as opposed to a Japanese woman. I think there's a correlation to them owning these ragged ass stores that dudes get shot in, shot in front of, you know, and they still there taking money. So, and I say all that to say that Jenny Ma, she, she is no different than a red row, whatever you call it. She's a, but she is what she is, a thought. She just comes in a different flavor. <laughs> I've seen a gang of these little Asian, these little Vietnamese, Korean, um, chick. What, there, was a, there was one on here. What was her name? Vu. She used to do a lot of black, she talked black. Uh, you know, she had that 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 cloak of blackness, uh, uh, degenerative. I think she was um, Vietnamese. And she used to interview a lot of black folks, black, you know, and talk about sh black shit. You know? And they're good at copying. They're good at copying. Asians are very good at copying shit. Like, even... I, I I watched this video of Pat Morita. <laughs> and he's Japanese, or uh, Okinawan one, because there's a difference. But nevertheless, he did an impersonation of Red Fox. And you know that motherfucker sounded just like Red. I mean, this Asian Pat Morita, you know, karate, you know, Mr. Miyagi, karate kid. And that's, I was like, damn. But see, that's what they're good at copying. They're good at getting in. And, and you even see it in the hood spot. Some of them Chinese spots fry chicken better than niggas. <laughs> it's rare. But they're good at taking shit and, and making it there. They're putting their own spin on it. And then like, ha ha, this is ours. They're good at that. But yeah, you you are hard pressed. She is she is just that. And like I said, I've seen so many Asian women, Korean women, these these, you know, especially now they got a little butt. Oh, you can't tell them nothing now. And guess what? You got Jeezy Dust uh, Simp dudes that fall for this shit. And prop they ass up. That's all he did. He propped this. He propped this chick up, and she knew, and he knew her get down. And then now he wants to realize, oh, I'm done. Well, damn, brother, you didn't put a now. Now, now, this is what's gonna happen. That child, that Blasian child, in 20 years, she gonna think she's the shit. That's what's gonna happen. So when I hear, so when I hear a, a Cynthia G, you know, R.I.P. <laughs> to her YouTube career, uh, she's alive. But um, so when I hear a Cynthia G talk kind of like this, it, brother, you put, you leave her no fucking choice. You leave her no choice. You know, when you're doing shit like this. 
You know damn well that you was just the help. And I said, there's a lot of non-black women. They don't have, they don't want shit to do with the man. They just want to have that mixed child. That's it. But yeah, it, it's crazy. It, it, it's wild out here. You got these Latino sisters. See, this is the thing too. A lot of women, a lot of these non-black women, thanks to social media, they know what's up. They see the dysfunction amongst black women and black men, and they capitalize on it. I watched this video of this Latino. I think she had to be Puerto Rican. And she was a little heavy, you know. And here she was. This is this was her intro. You know, I you know a, a lot of black. You know, I've dated a lot of black men. Which is a, see when I hear shit like that, and you not married. See, brothers, you need to start jotting shit like that down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You got to jot. You know what jot jot me. Write it down. Jot that shit down, man, so you don't forget. Y'all need to start jotting shit like that down. And because this is a woman, this is a Puerto Rican woman that thinks she's fucking in. And in all about accounts, she, in, in all accounts, rather, according to guys like Jeezy and Dust, she fucking is. And what I mean, what I'm saying is, this is a woman that said, a heavy set Latino woman, who I believe is Puerto Rican. I've dated a lot of black men that say they like, you know, they prefer Latina, like in this year, Latinas, because, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, they take care of their men. They cater to their men. And then she got to saying, yeah, I thought about it. And then, you know, I was like, yeah, because as Latinas, we the shit. The cockiness. Jot that shit down. Jot that, that she likes a lot of black men, but not married. Secondly, the cockiness factor. Okay, that's two. And then she got to say, well, I then thought about that could be a bad thing. You know, because, you know, making it seem like we're weak and we can be taken advantage over. And that's where that sisterhood shit comes in at. And I say, guys, the sisterhood is always in effect. What you having now is you having a lot of tra women who are traditional, in a sense, they've been so bombarded with this bullshit culture, the degenerative American cultures, you know, to where they're like, they going off the beaten path. They, you going off your natural accord. You going off your natural accord. You wasn't raised like that, Sylvia. <laughs> you was raised to cater, to tend to your man. But you seeing all this hot girl summer shit, you want to be that. You, you, you're unbecoming of a Latina. <laughs> so that's what we're dealing with. So guys, you need to understand that Beware of the cockiness, too. Because like I said, there's a lot of non-black women that know, that know, not assume, but know, that when all else fails, you know, Hector's not messing with me. You know, I mean, Manuel ain't checking for me. I gained a little weight. You know, uh, I can always go get me a dusty black guy. At the end of the day. <laughs> and that's real talk. That's real talk. Jeezy heard, I know he heard all that shit she was saying. How she's infatuated with rappers. And he went and nutted up in this chick. Married her. Played husband and wife. And, you know, a lot of black women are dragging him on the social media. And I, you know, look, this whole, like, he wants a black woman now. And I look at my, I look at me. Look, I've always, I just like women. See, women need to understand that. Because you got some sisters out here that, oh, 
So you you mess with white women? I'd be like, yeah. And you got some women that be like black women out here like, well, I don't know. You can just... Look, I'm a damn man. I likes vagina. Okay? No matter what the color is. See, you can't do, and this is where they not knowing. See, sister, you can't do what I do. It's not in your nature, and everybody knows it, for you to be jumping from penis to penis. I can do that as a man. I can do that. And once we, once they start understanding shit like that, we can get through to the next stage, the next phase. You know? But yeah, there's a lot of non-black women that know, they know that there's, where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> so they see all the dysfunction amongst us, and they think they can get in. They think they can get in. I don't, me, I don't particularly like Caucasian or Hispanic women that just exclusively date black men because I know what comes with that. There's fetishes. You know, you don't, you shouldn't marry your fetish. <laughs> don't marry your fetish. Like that, you know. I got to have me a white woman. Well, well, brother, okay. Do you want a uh, five, six, a hundred and uh, 32 pound white woman? Five, seven, hundred and thirty-two pound? Or would, do you want a five, eight white woman that's 285 pounds? And I believe that there's a lot of brothers that will take just any old non-black woman just off the strength that she's not black. I see it all the damn time, especially where I live. So, I knew this video has got almost 15 minutes. But, um, yeah, this thought culture, you know, it, 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 it you know, like the Suki Hanas, the Megan the Stallion, don't be fooled. Yeah, they in Dubai and and all this shit. But they gonna crash and burn, man. In ten years, they gonna be all. They gonna be uh, you know, older. All these ugly ass tattoos on their legs and chest, and not finding a man. No decent man, cause ain't no decent man with something going on. Gonna want a guy, gonna want a woman with all them goddamn tattoos around her chest, scepter rings in the nose, piercing, all that bullshit. Ain't no decent guy gonna want her ass. So don't be, don't, don't be like, yeah, damn, damn, bitch, you're doing it up, man, damn, man, look at me. They'll crash and burn. You know why? Cause they don't have the goodness or the resolve to maintain riches like that. They don't. So this like all these OnlyFans chicks making sixty grand a month or thirty grand, they'll crash and burn. You know why? Because they don't have the resolve or the temperance to deal with that, and they gonna trick it off, fuck it off. Look with Cynthia G. All that goddamn money, and you beg it. Don't matter. I mean, <laughs> so. It, you know, it's kind of like keep your nose to the grindstone and work. That that's that's the move. All this, all this scamming, quick money shit. Those folks will crash and burn. They end up gonna be in the feds doing uh, all day. Well, you are gonna do a lot. I think you do at least what eighty five percent of your. If you for the feds, you you gonna do most of that time. So they're going to be gone, uh, and they ain't going to have shit to show for it. So just keep doing you. You know, it's a marathon, not a goddamn sprint. Painless out.